But anyway, let me explain how you should sim your profession thing if you're doing your vault. If you open up your vault and you want to figure out what the best upgrade is. So for example, I have two trinkets, I have a weapon, I have stuff, blah, 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 right? So first of all, depending on what you want to sim, usually you want to sim single target, right? Because simming AOE is like, it doesn't really work that well. So most people want to sim single target for raiding. So the way you want to do that, first of all, to make it a bit easier, just select your single target talents already. Like just make sure you select your single target talents. Then you open up your vault and then you press Sim C to get this. In case you don't have the add-on, then you should download it, obviously. It's a simulation craft is what that is called. Then you copy your, your string. You should do this while the vault is open, right? Because then it copies your vault. You go to raid bots, you go to top gear, you paste your Sim craft input. And now you will see the items from the vault. Like this one here, it has this like GV icon, like this is from the vault. Um, then you can see these leggings are from the vault and so on and so on. And now you can compare them. Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind whenever you compare items from a vault is that you might be losing things that you have to replace otherwise. Like for example, like if you look at the, the legs that I got, see these are 421 legs that are in my vault, but currently I have tier legs equipped. So if obviously equipping these legs would be a huge damage loss because I would be losing my four piece. But if you have a, another four, P, if you have another tier set, like for example, currently I don't have gloves equipped, tier gloves. If you have tier gloves in your bag or in your bank or whatever, then you can sim these legs. So you can select them, but then you also need to make sure you select your tier gloves. So the iterations or the, the combinations of gear will sim with four sets by just equipping the gloves and using the, the legs instead. You know what I mean? That makes sense, right? Now, that's one thing you have to keep in mind with the four set. But then it's the same thing for your crafted gear as well. For example, currently I have an embellishment on my weapon. Increase the duration of Isle's potion by 50%, right? Now, if I want to sim this staff, this two-hand staff, I have to keep in mind that I would be losing my embellishment if I equip this, right? So what you want to do is you want to sim your other crafted gear as if it had the embellishment on it because you can change that, right? For example, I have this ring here that is a crafted ring without an embellishment. But I can recraft this ring with an embellishment on it. So I can you press this plus sign here and then you select the embellishment that you want. So now I select this ring and now I have the ring with the embellishment and the ring without the embellishment. And my simulation will consider that, right? So whenever it would sim a combination with this vault weapon, it would equip the ring with the embellishment, right? Simulation craft will figure it out and put the best combo together. You can also copy the weapon and remove the embellishment if you want that to be a thing, right? So now it's simming the weapon with the embellishment and without, in case you have another embellishment that you want to sim or something like that, you can always do that because you can remove embellishments from your profession gear, you can add embellishments, you can change stats, whatever you want to do. So yeah, now the sim would work properly. Now that I selected the staff and the ring with embellishment. If you don't do that, then it will sim the weapon as a downgrade because you would be losing out an embellishment for equipping it, right? So this is the only way on how you can sim the vault properly because of course you have to make up for the things that you lose, like the embellishments in the tier set. Which movement to use for the sim dummy? Light movement or which one? I don't use any movement at all. Well, okay, so if you're simming, basically always just want to keep this on patchwork. Even though that is unrealistic, it is the most accurate the numbers are going to be. You have to remember that SimCraft uses an APL, action priority list, that is being made by theory crafters, by players, right? And this, this list that the computer is following can only be perfect if it's a standstill fight. As soon as you add variables, like as soon as you add like AOE or you're adding movement or you're adding this or you're adding that, those APLs at that point, they break down and don't work properly anymore because the theory crafters are not perfectly like figuring out what the best action priority list would be for all of these other situations because it's too complex. It's way too complicated for theory crafters to write the APLs properly for all of these situations, right? So almost all theory crafters completely focus on, on patchwork single target, yeah? Most of them also um, figure out their APL for patchwork AOE as well. So most 
APLs work properly on AoE 2, but only patchwork AoE. So if you if you keep this fight style on patchwork and you increase the number of targets, those the APLs usually still work for this well, right? So simming patchwork six bosses or ten bosses or whatever should still work fine. But as soon as you change the fight style, the APLs don't work that well anymore, usually. Just because the theory crafters are not focusing on those APLs, right? Because it's uh, much more complicated than any standstill fight. That's why I personally recommend to only sim patchwork. I, I don't recommend changing any of this to anything other than patchwork. And then you just use your brain to think about the numbers in a logical way, right? For example, if you want to sim M+, plus, for example, you cannot do that perfectly, first of all. Yeah, simming in plus is impossible to get a perfect kind of uh, number out of it. It doesn't work because in plus is completely dependent on the key level, the affixes, the kind of dungeon it is, the other people that you're playing with and so on and so on. Like it's impossible to figure out perfect numbers from plus. But what you can do is figure out your own damage for AOE and for single target and then just logically combine the numbers, right? So you can sim your character for a single target and you can sim your character for a like AOE situation on a shorter amount of time. So for example, if I want to sim M+, I'm going to sim like an M+, pool where let's say, okay, we're going to pull six mobs and these mobs are going to be alive for 1 minute 30 because the key level that I'm doing is high and the mobs are going to be alive for 130, right? Now, depending on what you want to sim for, you have to change this. If you want to sim for a lower amount of time, like let's say you're doing plus 15 keys and your mobs only live for 40 seconds or for 20 seconds, then you have to change this, right? But for like a high key level on 45, the mobs live for around like a minute or a minute 30, right? And then you sim this. And then you see the results and then you can compare them, right? You can see, okay, so on AoE, this is what does the most damage. And on single target, this is what does the most damage. And then you can compare the two, right? For example, if you have a trinket that you're simming and on single target, it's the best trinket by far, but on AoE, it's the most horrible trinket by far, right? Well, at that point you could say, well, I probably shouldn't run this trinket. Maybe there's other trinkets that are still good for single target, but they're also good for AoE, right? A good example for this would be the Chill Globe, that is like the healer trinket, right? That has an unuse effect that only does single target damage, right? Now, of course, on single target it would seem really well, and as soon as there's more targets, it seems pretty bad, because uh, it only hits one target. So at that point, you just look at the differences, and you're like, okay, well, this trinket is the second best for single target, and the best for AoE, right? So then it would be a no-brainer to go with that trinket instead of going with a trinket that is really good on single target but absolutely garbage on AoE and so on, right? You can just compare a single target versus a AoE like that and then you just pick the in-between things because whenever you do M+, you do want AoE damage, which is the most important thing usually, but then you also do want to have a decent amount of single target damage. You don't want to do like absolutely no single target damage because that would also be bad, right? So usually you want to go with an in-between kind of thing and just pick whatever is good for both, in a sense. You always have to keep in mind that SimCraft is just a simulation where your character is standing still, hitting a dummy for five minutes. Doing absolutely no movement, absolutely no variables, nothing, right? And then whenever you remember that, it makes sense that some things are simming differently. Like for example, the embellishments is a very good example because um, this blue silken lining embellishment gives you mastery if you're above 90% HP, right? And a lot of people thought that it's so good because they were simming it and it simmed the best, right? But then you always have to keep in mind the simulation is not considering your health to drop at all. Like on SimCraft, your character doesn't lose HP. Your character is at 100% HP this whole five minutes of the duration that you're simming. Is that a realistic scenario? Obviously not, right? So you always have to keep these things in mind whenever you look at these SimCraft numbers, that there might be variables that are not being considered on SimCraft. Like there's no movement that is being considered, there's no HP dropping considered, there's no maybe ads that spawn randomly considered, like there's all of this stuff that just doesn't happen, right? Just don't lose HP, exactly. 
So sometimes you just have to look at the results because SimCraft numbers are very, like they help you so much if you look at the numbers uh, in a logical way though, right? And that, that's with any kind of numbers. Also with details, with Warcraft logs, with simulation craft, like all of these things give you very valuable data, but you have to look at the data and apply it logically, right? You can't just take the numbers from all of these things and just like take them as, a, as like God's word or something without understanding how they work. And at the same time, you also have to trust the numbers if it makes sense, right? How do you sim if X gems are better than the ones I already have? The problem with gems is that, that it's not implemented properly right now, I think. So SimCraft is not simming gems properly at the moment when it comes to the Lariat, as, as far as I know. I think it's not simming the difference between the different kinds of gems, which is also something that I didn't know. I thought it's simming it properly, but it's not. I think the only reason why it's not implemented is because of it requiring so many iterations. I, I know that's not the answer you want, but, but yeah, in case you guys don't know how the Lariat works, the jewel crafting necklace. So the Lariat says, your spells and abilities have a chance to empower one of your socketed elemental gems, granting 500 of their associated set for 12 seconds. And that means a lot of people don't necessarily know how this works. And it has to do with the kind of gem that it is. So if you if you mouse over your, your gems, you can see what they are here. Like for example, this is an air gem. I guess this is a fire gem. This is an earth gem. And this is a frost gem, okay? Mouse overing them, you can see what kind they are. So all of the bottom ones are frost. All of these ones are air. And then the ones that are fire. And depending on which element it is, you will get a different proc. So for example, this gem here, the 17 mastery slash 33 haste one gives you a haste proc, okay? From the Lariat. Because a lot of people think that you get the mastery proc from this gem, but you don't, you get a haste proc because it's an air onyx. And air is haste proc. The haste mastery one, this one is an earth emerald and earth gives you mastery. So if you have this gem, 70 haste and 33 mastery, then you get a mastery proc. Now, if you have an 88 mastery, that's also earth. So that means it's a mastery proc. Air is haste, earth is mastery, fire is crit, and frost is versatility proc. And I think the, the problem with SimCraft is right now that it's not simming combinations of uh, different elements. It's kind of weird. Like it's not simming it all perfectly for the Lariat because it would be just insane iterations that it would require to figure that out. So right now it's just not simming it properly. So I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I think you just um, do whatever. <laughs> like, I, don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's just, it's just not working. <laughs> so I personally am just going with the gems that I think are the best. And I'm just going to go with the haste proc. Set weights with the sets you need. Well, no, because... Because if I want a mastery, mastery is my best set, right? As a Moonkin. But if I equip the high mastery gem, then I get a haste proc. So at this point, it's not about which sets are better. It would be what's more valuable. Like, is the proc more valuable or is the gem more valuable? And that's something that is incredibly hard to figure out without doing the math, right? So as a Moonkin, it might be worth it to equip 70 haste and 33 mastery gems because that one gives you a mastery proc. So now, so yes, you have more haste baseline. You're, you're missing out on some mastery on, on your basic gear, but your, your Lariat gives you a, a mastery proc. Is that better? I don't know. <laughs> like it's the, <laughs> I don't know. Could be better, could be, I don't know. Yeah, you can run the pure gems, but they are less secondary sets. Because 70 mastery and 33 haste is 103 secondary sets. And the pure gems are only 88. So you're missing out on uh, 14 secondary sets in total. It might be worth it if you are if you have one set that is much better for you than the others, right? Like if your class has haste as your best set by far, then it of course might be worth it to go with the full haste gem. But that's something that uh, depends on your class or your spec. Isn't set weight sim broken? Set weight sim is not broken. It's just that the set weight sim doesn't really tell you anything because it like changes so easily. Simming your set weights doesn't really make much sense because you could sim your sets and it tells you that, I don't know, mastery is your best set. And then you change one item and all of a sudden crit is your best set, you know what I mean? 
Like it just really changes a lot depending on your gear and what you're changing around. So usually set weights are being simmed with normalized sets. Whenever your set weights are being simmed by theory crafters, then they're simming their set weights by having all normalized sets. So you have like 1000 mastery, 1000 haste, 1000 crit, 1000 verse, and then they're simming the sets to see which set is in theory better. Cause then you know, okay, if all of them are normalized, there's no diminishing returns, there's no difference in value, and then you know exactly, okay, master is your best set. But as soon as you have different values, then a set that might not be so good for your class might seem better because of diminishing returns. Because the more sets of something you have, the less valued it is. So if I have 5,000 taste, but, only, but I have zero crit, even if crit might be the worst stat for your spec, for you specifically, because you have zero crit, it might be the best set by far because you just have nothing. So each point of crit will be more value than haste until you have a, a certain amount and then it might switch back to mastery again, right? Like it always depends on how much you have of each of the stats and there's like diminishing returns and like differences in stats and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to consider any caps or whatever. That's something that really shouldn't concern you at all. These so-called caps that people are referring to, it's like a really old school thing that we don't have anymore. People constantly ask me, Nagura, is there a haste cap? Is there a mastery cap? Is there a certain amount of stuff that I should be having? And the answer is always no. Caps are not a thing anymore. The reason why people still think that there are caps is because it was a big thing in the past, like a long time ago. And um, before we had dynamic scaling, there was something called haste caps because we didn't get like partial ticks of dots and hots, for example. So basically in the past, the way a dot worked was that let's say you put moonfire on your target and it would tick every one and a half seconds. Now, if you had more haste, let's say you had 2000 haste, you would get 10 ticks. But if you had 1999 haste, you get only nine ticks. So that one point of haste gave you one additional tick of your dot, which was an insane difference, of course, right? So that's why those so-called haste caps existed in the past. But dots have been changed a long time ago that you get partial ticks now. So your, your dots and your hots scale dynamically with your haste value now. So if you have 1,999 haste, you don't lose one whole tick of your dot or your hot, you get like 99% of its value instead of the full value. So instead of the dot doing 100 damage, it does 99 damage. You know what I mean? Like it's just like partial ticks and partial heals and whatever. So that's why there are no like haste caps anymore like we used to have them in the past. At this point, your, your haste just scales dynamically. And the same goes with uh, snapshotting. Snapshotting is also not a thing anymore. Everything that you do scales dynamically with your sets. It doesn't like snapshot a certain moment in time and like screenshots your, your sets from that time. Like it dynamically looks at your sets all the time. And if you gain intellect, whatever you have running on your targets will do more damage. And if you lose intellect, the things that you have running on your target will lose damage, right? So it's constantly scaling with, with uh, whatever you currently have. And that's why all of these caps or whatever are just not really a thing anymore. There are like very few exceptions where something like haste caps still exist. It has usually more to do with cast time and fitting something into a certain window. For example, I remember MM Hunter used to have some kind of haste cap because they wanted to fit like aim shots into their whatever window it was. Moonkins used to have haste caps with the Emerald Dreamcatcher in Legion because he wanted to cast Star Search and then he wanted to fit in as many casts as possible within like a two second window and then he wanted to cast Star Search again. So whenever you have a buff that doesn't scale with haste, like any sort of duration, any sort of time frame that you need to fit things into and the buff timer does not change, then of course you will still have these so-called haste caps because the faster you're casting your spells, the more you're gonna fit into that time frame, right? So that's why we had, why there's still haste caps sometimes, but it has nothing to do with dots or hots or anything like that. It has to do with certain like, you know, time frames where you wanna fit spells into.